Hey guys, Helen here. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in to this video. Today we are talking birth story. So it's been about two and a half weeks since I had our baby girl, Emery, and I'm finally finding the time to kind of hop on here and tell you guys all about it. So obviously in the house, this is the best I could do for getting ready today. <laughs> Um, it's been an amazing two and a half weeks, but I'm sure I probably look tired as I am tired, but I wanted to get this up and share with you guys just because while it's still like fresh in my brain and before, you know, I really, um, lose track of everything that happened. So let's get into it. All right. So it is baby day. Um, Emery is going to be born today. before I dive into our actual um, birth story and how our baby came into this world. But I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a backstory first. So we got pregnant in April and in July, I actually had a abdominal surgery to remove um, my right ovary. And that was because of a massive cyst that they found during our first ultrasound. So it was obviously like a big shocker and um, we didn't really expect any of that to happen and because of that surgery and because they were able so it went well they were able to remove um, everything the cyst that they thought was just like a cyst ended up actually being a borderline tumor so which is why they had to remove the entire ovary so it was really crazy and scary and um, but because of them finding that we were actually going to then have a bunch of ultrasounds throughout pregnancy just to keep track of the baby's growth because of, I guess when you have a surgery and they just, you know, want to keep track of everything and make sure the baby is growing fine and, and that the surgery didn't affect her at all, which it never did, which was awesome. And then also in all those ultrasounds, they also found that I had like a small cyst on my left ovary. and. They weren't super concerned about that, but just because of my history, they were a little bit concerned. So we ended up having ultrasounds almost like every four weeks throughout pregnancy, which for some doctors, it might be normal for some. My OB typically doesn't do that many ultrasounds throughout pregnancy. So it was a little bit different for us in that sense. It was great because we got to see our baby often, but it also, you know, was just a protocol for them to keep track of how things were going. So that being said, that is why we had so many ultrasounds throughout pregnancy. And through those ultrasounds, we continuously saw that our baby was breech. So if you guys know, breech means that the head is up versus down. So obviously you ideally want them to be head down to, as you're going into labor so they can go through the birth canal easily head down. So, um, in the US, if your baby's breech, I don't know how it works otherwise, but in the US, most hospitals will not deliver a breech baby vaginally, so it usually means a C-section. So going into pregnancy, I had this whole ideal thought that I would have a natural labor. I would do it in the hospital just in case to be like safe in case anything happened, but because I am physically fit and active, I just had this like ideal that I would have a natural vaginal labor and have this baby, um, you know, in like the most glorious way possible. And I think it's 
funny because now looking back like that none of that really like matters to me anymore but at the time it was really important to me that that was how it would happen so at our 20 week anatomy scan baby was breached at like 24 weeks baby was breached 28 weeks um and as we hit like the 30s that's when things started to be like okay is this is she really gonna flip or is she gonna be breached and are we gonna have a c-section and all that stuff so it was definitely time for me to like flip my mindset and be okay with the fact that if this resulted in a c-section it would be totally fine and it doesn't really matter how you deliver your baby as long as you know you're healthy and the baby's healthy so that being said we were still breached at like 32 weeks and at that point that's when i started trying to do like all the little like tips and tricks for flipping your baby so every night i was doing the inversions where my knees were on the couch and I would have my elbows on the ground and my husband would help me with those but I was trying to do inversions there's also exercises that you do on like all fours um, some people say that I don't know if it's like a myth or not but if you put an ice pack up top to like make the baby cold so then they want to like flip to go head down so there's just all sorts of whether it's like scientific methods or just like wives tales or whatever i was trying everything to get this baby to flip and so we had discussed with my ob that if she didn't you know there's always the option of the ecv i believe it's called the external cephalic version where they manually you go into the hospital um sometimes they even give you pain meds because it can be really painful and they try to manually flip the baby so I initially thought that that's what I wanted to try at 37 weeks if she hadn't flipped but as we approached um it was at my 36 week appointment I was measuring small and so they actually sent me in for like an emergency ultrasound um minutes after my OB appointment because they were concerned that either my amniotic fluid levels were too low or the baby wasn't like growing anymore and so with that, it was kind of like an initial scare. Um, we went in for an ultrasound like minutes after my appointment and they saw that like baby was growing totally fine and it was just my amniotic fluid levels that were like on the low range of, or at the lower point of like the normal range. So from there, now that we knew my amniotic fluid level was low, my OB suggested and I already was like thinking that I didn't even want to try the ECV anymore just because with it there's always like a risk that it'll put you into preterm labor there's also a chance that it's like a 50 50 chance of it working or not and so it's kind of like do you really want to go through all of that for just a small chance of it working and then also because my amniotic fluid levels are low they didn't really think of me as a good candidate for it because um it's obviously a lot easier for the baby to churn if there's more fluid so with all of those kind of you know with all those things being factors we me and my husband decided along with my ob that we didn't even want to try the ecb and so basically we we're like okay well if she's not flipping like maybe it's for a reason maybe there's you know some sort of reason why we should be doing a c-section and um yeah so anyways that's kind of where we were at at 36 weeks so we knew my fluid levels were low we decided not to do the ecd so as the pregnancy continued um we continued to do a couple more ultrasounds just because they wanted to keep track of my fluid levels to make sure that they were staying up in like the normal range which they did which is great but as we were kind of going into like this thought of maybe doing a c-section we started talking to my ob about potential um like a potential reason why we should have the oncologist and on the surgery as well so we ended up actually i had because of that cyst that i had on my left ovary we have been going we had gone in to see an, a gynecological oncologist to talk to her about if the cyst like on my left side was an issue or if it you know it's potentially cancerous or anything like that when we did um have an appointment with her she kind of just said i'm not concerned about it now let's get through the pregnancy and then we'll talk through things after so that was kind of our plan at the time now that we were 
starting to talk about a planned C-section, my OB suggested that we have the oncologist come in and actually be part of um, the surgery and that way she could take a look at the cyst while I was already open to up. So it ended up actually being kind of, I, I don't know if like that's the reason why we, you know, she was breached and all that stuff, but it gave us an opportunity to have the oncologist come in for the C-section as well. So now we're going in. My due date was the 25th and usually with C-sections you want to do it about a week before just because that way they can, um, it's more of less of a chance that you would like go into labor and it's a lot easier if you're not in labor. Um, to do a c-section so we scheduled it for the 19th um, I didn't really tell I didn't make it like publicly known I wasn't sharing all over social media or anything like that that we were having a scheduled c-section a because I didn't want to get like with a backlash of it because I feel like there's like this weird um, negative mindset of a c-section which I now don't really understand why but looking back on it it was kind of like one of those things where I didn't want to get people's opinions um I know that some people do deliver breech babies vaginally but it is pretty dangerous and it also works a lot more it's a lot more successful if you've already had babies delivered vaginally before and since this was my first pregnancy first baby I was not that was not something that I was going to attempt or even <laughs> consider and so we had our c-section scheduled it was kind of nice because my mom was able to fly out the day before knowing that she would stay for like a whole week and be able to help us out. There was no like, you know, fire drill of like, I'm going into labor, let's grab the bags and get to the hospital. Um, we had like a planned day and time, which now I actually really appreciated because it gave our families a chance to be here and it kind of really just allowed us to like have everything scheduled, which my personality enjoys that completely and so does my husband so I'm <laughs> grateful for that but anyway so we were scheduled for the 19th and um, we went in and had the c-section at 1 p.m. everything went like super well the oncologist was in there she was able to look at my cyst and at the ovary and just um, actually let us know that it wasn't anything that she was concerned about at, in like at this point in time so it's something we'll continue to keep track of. It is a little bit scary just knowing that it's like still there and that um, we don't really know exactly like what it is, but they were able to get pathologies like around it. I guess you can't really get a pathology of it specifically because if it is dangerous and you pop it and it spreads, then it can be really bad. So that being said, we had the oncologist in there, my OB in there. They did like an amazing job. It was super quick. Um, Honestly, like the scariest part of it for me was getting the epidural and like just the buildup of going into it versus like the actual surgery <laughs> itself. So mind you, I had an abdominal surgery earlier this year in July. So it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, dang it, like I'm having another surgery. It's going to be another like tough recovery. And on top of it, I'm going to be having a baby to take care of. But we ended up having like the best experience that I like I'm still shocked to think about how good of a recovery I had like honestly how easy of a recovery it was for me and I'm not sure why exactly it was or if it was just like perspective because my surgery earlier this year was a lot more painful um because it was a laparoscopic surgery so it was like really minimally invasive but they had they had to put in like gas to expand my abdomen and that just made like the recovery of my um, rib muscles and like my shoulders and neck and everything was just like so sore I couldn't like sit up on my own. So having the C-section I kind of like expected it to be that hard and it honestly was like 10 times easier. And it allowed like I said for the oncologist to be in there to get an, um, a view of my cyst so now when we have like follow-up visits with her she has a better idea of what's going on but the c-section itself um we went in i had the epidural that like i said it was the hard that was like the scariest part to me i was sitting on the edge of the table and one of the nurses was in front of me and she was just like holding my hands and i like honestly just started bawling i don't know if it was like 
the anxiety building up to having you know knowing that like we were gonna have our baby within minutes or what it was <laughs> but I like I guess I kind of just needed that moment to like cry and get it all out and then after that I was like good like Tyler then was able to come into the room I was prepped and like set up and everything from there just happened super quickly super smoothly um the incision site honestly is like so low and it healed up really nicely already and in my opinion with my personal experience and recovery like a c-section is not the end of the world and it's not like some horrible thing i understand that like if you probably were in labor and then it ended in like an emergency c-section it's probably a lot more of like a difficult recovery but for me i just had like such a good experience with it and we stayed up um, in the hospital for two nights it we ended up like not staying the third night that they usually like you end up staying three nights if you have a c-section but we didn't have to just because i was doing really well and emory was doing really well and so tyler and i decided like we'll just go home and you know get our life started at home so the actual birth i guess in my opinion was kind of uneventful <laughs> um everything during my pregnancy leading up to the birth was kind of what was more so eventful and a little bit scary at times and definitely like very emotional and just has been like this roller coaster of a process but we have a beautiful baby girl out of it um she was breech obviously and that's why we had the c-section so i did have like fears of if her hips were going to be okay because she was in a frank breech position for her entire pregnancy or if you know she was gonna have any issues with like her head shape or any other like parts of her body that might have like been in an uncomfortable position and luckily praise God like everything um, is perfect with her she's totally healthy she was just under seven pounds which we were kind of expecting her to be a little bit smaller because she was measuring small throughout the pregnancy but um, the fact that she was a week early and delivered a week early and was just under seven pounds was kind of you know pretty normal size wise so she is you know the cutest sweetest little thing and yeah so that was our actual birth and then coming out of that so getting home we i had like my mom here staying at our house which was super helpful and she was you know cooking meals for us and cleaning and all that stuff so that was amazing and really helpful we also had Tyler's family in town that would stop by and like bring stuff over or you know just like give us a break and hold the baby so I could go take a nap or anything like that and so it was just really awesome to have like the family support of course and then but it was like the first week especially was really crazy like emotional I didn't think that like there I could a cry so much and then <laughs> be like cry for no reason at all and <laughs> I think it's just like obviously your hormone levels go from you know being pregnant and being at this point and then they just like drastically drop and you get all the stuff taken out of your body and your body just has to like figure it out and I think that's obviously what causes a lot of the emotional part of it and then also just the fact that you now have like this human relying on you and like um, figuring out like breastfeeding and figuring out what she wants and why she, you know why she might be crying or fussing and all of that stuff and it's just very very emotional but obviously the best most wonderful gift ever and so I think like sometimes I would cry because things were a little bit challenging or I was really tired and then sometimes it was just like I feel so blessed and I have the most beautiful baby and <laughs> it's just like this crazy emotional roller coaster that first week especially and then the second week it's definitely you know gotten a lot better and now we are about like two and a half weeks out um she is 17 days old as i'm recording this video and so it's where i feel like we're kind of getting into a groove we have you know our own little like routine and stuff at home and 
I say routine really loosely as you don't really can't really have a routine with a newborn but like the you know patterns of like eat play sleep like we're trying to follow and it's just been the most like wild and rewarding and emotionally crazy experience ever but I guess I just wanted to hop on here and share all of that with you guys just because I know I've been a little bit like MIA as far as Instagram goes and I didn't really um, tell people we were having a C-section and so I think people like were really shocked with how quickly everything happened and that's why because I was able to go for a walk in the morning and then we checked in you know at 11 a.m. <laughs> and we had our baby by 1.20 p.m. So it was a crazy experience. I wanted to hop on here just to like tell you guys all about it but also to hopefully like take away some of your fear if you are an expecting mom that like might have a breech baby or might have to have a c-section or have to like schedule a c-section i guess i just want to come on here and say like it's totally okay it's not as bad as people make it out to seem i understand that like some people have bad experiences but i just wanted to share my positive good experience um hoping that like maybe it'll give someone out there a peace of mind about the fact that like it's okay to have a c-section it's okay to like have it planned if that's what needs to happen and you know in a lot of ways we didn't really have a choice to do it any other way but at the same time i feel like we also like made the choice to do it because in our opinion it was like the safest best option for our baby and for myself and really it just i don't know i i don't feel like i like failed at you know delivering a baby naturally because that was like the way that I wanted to do it initially. I don't feel like I failed and I just want you guys to know like at the end of the day when you are holding your baby in your arms, it really does not matter how they came into the world. You know, it doesn't matter how you delivered regardless if it was a plan C-section or emergency or a natural birth or a vaginal birth with, a, with an epidural. Like it does not matter and I'm hoping that like this puts a little bit of perspective out there for people that are, you know, in a similar situation as me and might have a C-section and um, that it's totally okay and it honestly is not as bad <laughs> as some people make it out to seem. So I hope um, this, you know, just gives you guys an idea of how it all went down and also hopefully gives some comfort to people out there that might be going through something similar. And I also hadn't really like shared the whole ovarian cyst stuff um, in detail, especially with the fact that like my, I don't even have a right ovary anymore. I had never really like shared that part of it either. I did do a blog post about that surgery, but it was um, not as detailed as I kind of went into on this video. So I hope that you guys, you know, enjoyed hearing our story. I hope it gives you a little peace of mind if you're going through anything similar and like I said it doesn't matter how your baby's born honestly I'm healthy she's healthy and to us like that's all that matters thank you guys so much for watching this video I would love if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it stay tuned for more newborn life things um, I will be talking about breastfeeding and how that's going for me as well as sharing products that we love and maybe things that we got that we aren't really using as much. So stay tuned for all of that and thanks again for watching.